Samaria is a cold, harsh land, but they keep dragging me back in. This is a review of Conan the Barbarian number three from Titan Comics. This is out right now, and so you can get at your local comic shop or get on Comixology. And so this is going to be a pretty short review because we've reached a point in the story where I can't say a whole lot without spoiling it for you. And so we're keeping the non-spoiler reviews and I'll probably do some spoilers, you know, like a spoiler section for next issue. But for right now, we're going to keep this short and sweet and start with the cover. This is by Doug Brithwaite. And this is going to be the artist for next story arc. And he is a great choice. Um, I'm familiar with his stuff on Thor. And uh, he is one of those artists that when I saw his work, I automatically think like, oh, he would be perfect for Conan. And he is. I mean, this just looks like fantasy artwork. Very detailed, very well composed, looks great. You know, Conan standing over what I'm assuming is the corpse of one of the zombies in this story. Just looks really, really cool. But if you want variant covers, you've got some really strong options. I actually saw some variant covers for once on my comic shop shelf. And I got to tell you, the one by Patch Zercher was very impressive. If they need an artist after that second plot line, he would be a good one. And so once again, we have artwork very reminiscent of John Basima, and it's just absolutely perfect, absolutely brings you back. But it's also just really good in its own right, and it's just quintessential fantasy artwork. And the same can be said of the story. It just feels like a good, solid Robert E. Howard-style story, something that you would see on an average issue of Savage Sword back in the day, back when Roy Thomas was writing everything. And so the reason I can't show you much of this issue is because they do start to reveal what is behind the zombies that Conan has been fighting in Samaria in this plot line. Now, the reveal is still pretty cryptic at this point, right? We don't quite know what they are, and I thought that they were probably something from a certain Robert E. Howard story, but I was like, hey, they don't look like that, or at least I hope they don't. And then in the back, there is actually an article that explicitly tells you what the things are. And that was greatly appreciated. And it was actually fascinating. And actually, the article actually lists the Robert E. Howard stories that they're in. And so I'm definitely looking those up and definitely appreciate that. And I suspect there will be an explanation in story or at least a partial explanation. I mean, the nature of this territory is obviously things tend to be left open-ended or cryptic, but I suspect there should be enough explanation as to what's going on to be particularly satisfying. But in the context of this issue, you know, it's more just life and death, you know, kind of stuff. And we do understand the stakes. We do understand that there are things that are going to kill Conan if he does not kill them. So, you know, that part is crystal clear in this story, and it'll be interesting to see kind of the larger story that they're building here and how it ties into other Robert E. Howard stories. And by the way, no reviews on the back of this issue, so I guess they've probably done away with that, so I'm very, very glad that they quoted me on the second issue, and I was able to kind of get in on that. I understand why they're using this valuable real estate to, you know, plug their book here. And um, obviously, at this point, if you are reading this, you can probably figure out if you like it on your own or not. You probably don't need quotes on the back telling you how wonderful it is. All right, that's it. Definitely looking forward to the last issue of this plot line and seeing what Titan Comics does with Conan after that. Like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, see ya!